Hey, what's up? Um, <clears throat> in this video, I'm going to go over um, the Howie Terminator X ECUs um, and kind of cover some of the questions that I get asked over and over again. Um, this is slowly becoming the most common, the most popular ECU that uh, we get inquiries about tuning um, and for good reason. So, um, uh, gonna not really a comparison, but uh, I will make some references to like factory ECU and HP tuners. Um, and this is just basically going to be um, for the Chevy LS platform, but a majority of it will kind of go with other models as well. So, so uh, when you talk about the Terminator X ECU, um, you can't help but uh, have a conversation about the price. Um, it is without a doubt the best feature of the ECU. Um, and at the same time, it is also the worst feature of the ECU. Um, to a lot of people, that probably doesn't make any sense. And then those of you that know what I'm talking about, uh, it makes all the sense in the world. Um, so we'll touch on the, uh, the second part of that uh, a little bit later. Hopefully you can't hear all the noise coming from the shop over there. It sounds like they're uh, cutting through cinder block wall or something crazy. Um, and I also just noticed I'm wearing a fuel tech hoodie, um, kind of just coincidence. Um, they gave me this and it's comfortable, so I wear it, um, but it has nothing to do with this video. So this one here is a Terminator X Max, uh, which has some additional features that the standard Terminator X does not have. Uh, the Terminator X is right around a thousand dollars. I think it's like nine ninety nine, and then this one I believe is twelve ninety nine. And for what you get and the fact that it actually works at all it is pretty mind-blowing um you know years back you couldn't get into an ecu that would do what these do for probably less than four or five thousand uh, dollars especially with engine harness um so for that price uh, you're getting obviously the ecu um, an engine harness and also a touch screen display um, which will allow you to make changes to the calibration um, and then view all of the sensors and things real time um, it's pretty small, like I don't necessarily think it would replace like a gauge cluster or and it's, it's surely not like a nice digital dash display like you see, um, you know, guys mount up in there where the gauge cluster would be. Um, but it's definitely nice to just have something to keep an eye on stuff without having to uh, drag around a laptop. Now the shop on that side of the wall just started a big diesel truck. So this is absolutely my payback for uh, making all the noise on the dyno all the time. Uh, I'm going to give that a second to see if it stops. All right, I guess um, the, some of the questions I get asked the most and first is, is it any good? Um, and again, sometimes when things are priced too good, you just assume that they're garbage. Um, but in the case of these, they actually work really well. Um, and they do a lot of things that you can't do with this. Um, so one is going to do a lot of things better than this, and then if you buy all the other knick-knack stuff to make this work, then um, you know the price of this becomes even more appealing. Um, so yes, it does work very well. Um, now with that being said, it is not a Dominator, it's not a HP, so it is going to be a little bit limited, but um, assuming you're using it uh, for certain certain things, it, it does what most people need it to do. Um, and then, uh, is it better than HP tuners? Um, I think that is a very specific question to how you're using the car and um, what car it is, um, which kind of ties into the next question of, will my factory gauges work? Uh, the short answer is no. Um, however, you can, make, you can make things work if you're creative. Um, and you might need some different uh, signal converters and this truck has gone up and down this road at least 150 times a day. Alright, there's just noise coming from everywhere, so if this sounds too bad, I might just have to uh, trash all this. I know it was a big waste of time, but um, as I was saying, um, you could probably make the factory gauges work, um, but you're not going to just plug the harness in that comes with the CCU and all of your gauges are going to work. Um, now with that being said, if this is a car that you're doing a swap into, uh, especially the older cars, um, it's far cheaper, quicker, and easier than trying to modify factory engine harness to work, uh, you know, with this. 
Um, so if it was a swapped car, I wouldn't even consider this. I would just go straight with this right from the get-go. Um, and again, that is, I say that if, in terms of if you're looking for an entry-level ECU. Um, you now, if it's a swapped car, I wouldn't just straight buy this versus some of the other options out there, um, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, like for me personally, there's some things with this that I would be deal breakers for me and any of the stuff that I would personally do. Um, but we'll get into that in a little bit too. Let's see, another question I always get asked is, do I need to get it tuned? Which sounds sort of crazy, but when you look at Holly's marketing um, and all the stuff that you see online, um, they do list this as self-tuning and self-learning and um, it's very, very misleading, um, especially the people that maybe don't necessarily know any better. Um, it does have a learn feature, but in no way, shape, or form is it self-tuning. Um, and again, I'll get back into the lean, uh, I'm sorry, the learn feature um, in a couple of minutes as well. Um, the next two questions kind of go together as well is, can I control an automatic transmission with it? Um, that's a self-shifting automatic trans. Um, obviously it's like a, power glider, turbo 400 that has no electronics, yes. Um, and then also, can I run drive by wire? Um, and that, those two things are the difference between the Terminator X Max and the normal Terminator X. Um, so if you're not doing drive by wire, wire or a shifting an automatic trans electronically, then the standard Terminator X will work. Um, if you want to do those two things, then you need the X Max. Um, and then the last question is, um, questions are how much horsepower will it support and which one will make more horsepower um, it'll support whatever it, neither one are going to be horsepower limited um, with the factory ECU depending on which ECU it is sometimes you run to um, the point where you do not have any more room left on your tables um, so you may max a table out at 30 pounds of boost but you want to run 50 pounds of boost um, so the ECU has no way of being able to distinguish how much time you should run at 30 or 50 um, as to where with this ECU um, the ignition tables are um, RPM and map based um, as to where the factory ECU uses uh, cylinder air mass which a lot of people aren't used to um, and there's some limitations there um, and with the factory ECU a lot of times once you get into larger fuel injectors um, you need to quote unquote scale the tune and spend all this time going in and basically tricking the ECU into thinking you're doing something that you're not. Um, I'm not a huge fan of tricking ECUs regardless of how or why. Um, and there are some tricks you can do with the Terminator X um, to get around some features that it does not have. Um, again, it's not my favorite thing in the world to do. I'd rather the ECU just do what I want. Um, but again, for the price, uh, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. Um, some of the functionality of the Terminator X ECUs that um, makes it much better than the factory stuff is um, you have real-time tuning. Uh, so basically, you can connect the laptop to the ECU um, and then make changes while the engine is running. Um, there's certain things that you can't change while it's running. It will make you turn the key off make your changes, save it, and then re-upload it. Um, that's basically any aftermarket ECU. Um, but for sake of conversation, if you wanted to change their fuel ratio or ignition timing or uh, boost or whatever that is while the engine's running, you can do that. Um, as well with the factory ECU, um, you're basically turning the engine off um, and reflashing the ECU uh, every time you want to make a change, um, which it's super inconvenient and pain in the ass, um, but where this like really shines is say you're cruising down the road at 2,000 RPM and the engine's hesitating and jerking and you're trying to figure out why. Um, with the real-time tuning, you can start swinging your fueling or your timing or whatever it is and see if you can make it better. Um, as to where with this, each time you want to change it, you would have to pull over, shut the car off. Uh, upload it and then try and get right back into that same point in the map and uh, it can it can be really frustrating um, so the real-time tuning um, is just night and day difference um, and uh, once you get used to the real-time tuning going back to this is kind of brutal um, so definitely we're checking out for that um, 
The other thing is um, this has uh, closed loop fueling uh, part throttle. Uh, once you get full throttle, you lose that. Uh, it's just not fast enough to keep up. Um, it doesn't have built in wide bands for making any type of adjustments. Um, they're just for for viewing if you wire in an external one. Um, this has a real time uh, wideband control. Um, so if uh, your fueling is off by 4% at 7,000 RPM and 1,200 horsepower, um, this can make those adjustments real time. Um, so I've seen in a lot of cases where that will save you, um, you know, say a fuel filter gets clogged up and now you would be running really lean, it can adjust um, the injector pulse width to make up for the difference, assuming there's still enough fuel flow, you know, for it to make the corrections. Um, and then it's nice too when you're looking through a log, like rather than seeing your air fuel is crazy lean and being, you know, scared you hurt something, um, instead your air fuel, will, generally speaking, will maintain the same. But now that you'll just notice that your uh, closed loop corrections are really, really large, um, so you can start investigating the problem. Um, without worrying about, uh, you know, if you hurt the motor. Um, so that's really nice. Um, I guess maybe uh, since the Terminator X is more along the lines of what I've done for many, many years before I started doing the factory GM ECU stuff, there's people that have done GM for a really long time. They look at the, the calibration and the tables in the Terminator and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense and vice versa. I personally find the Terminator X um, or really any standalone to be easier to, to grasp than the factory ECU stuff. Um, just the terminology is very consistent between you know nearly every brand of aftermarket ECU. As to where the factory computers, you have to be familiar with their terminology that um, just because you know what one thing is in a GM ECU doesn't mean you know what it is in a Ford ECU. Um, so it takes a lot of digging around and maybe talking to some people and uh, you know finding the answers. Um, but uh, again, this if you read what something is in this, it's you know it makes makes more sense um, rather than some things with this that might have some crazy name that doesn't mean anything until you you dig into it and see what it is. Um, and there are help files. Uh, within the Terminator X and it does come with instruction manual, which I obviously uh, highly recommend that you read um, as to where with the HP tuners um, There isn't really any documentation from them uh, most of it is just going to be stuff that you see on the forums and uh, Anyone that's familiar with forums knows that If you want to know the answer to something you need to find like 50 different answers to the question because 45 of them are probably going to be wrong. Um, Holly stuff does have forums. They also do have Facebook groups and um, some of the Facebook group stuff is uh, exactly what I'll be talking about when I get back to the point of uh, how the price of the ECU is one of the downfalls of it. Truck's apparently just going to run until the end of time. It's super loud. Um, so the, uh, with the Terminator X, um, if it's something that you're looking to tune yourself, um, you have the ability to do that. Um, as to where with HP tuners, um, a giant majority of people that are getting their cars tuned with HP tuners are not actually buying HP tuners units themselves, they're just buying credits. Um, so if you want to raise your idle from 799 RPM to 801 RPM, you're going to have to make a trip back to your tuner. Um, you're gonna have to have them do it for you, or you're gonna have to buy a cable, have them make revisions and send it to you, and um, you may or may not have to purchase more credits. Um, so if you just want to tune it and forget about it, uh, this works pretty well. But uh, if it's something that you think you might want to tinker with yourself, uh, this is gonna make your life substantially easier, in my opinion. Um, and um, this, the Terminator X, comes with its own engine harness. Um, it is pretty terrible, in my opinion, for what it is. Um, but uh, again, you know, for a thousand bucks, you can't expect too much. The fact that it even works for a thousand dollars is pretty crazy. I mean, really, you can't you can't really buy an engine harness for a thousand dollars. And in this case, it's coming with an ECU and a touchscreen display and 
and everything else. So um, you know, you can get kind of get past the fact that the harness is pretty ugly. Um, and in my experience, uh, usually ends up not being the right length um, for what you're trying to do. Um, however, it always works. But uh, you know, again, it needs to be really universal. Um, and at that price point, you can't complain too much about it. Um, a lot of times I see guys doing swaps and sending out factory ECUs and factory harnesses and buying credits and having everything modified and by the time you do all that you can probably just buy this. Um, and you can eliminate the factory engine harness completely if it's a swapped car. Um, now if you're trying to put it in like a Trailblazer SS or something you might kind of be running both harnesses at the same time. Um, I haven't done that particular install but uh, you know, again, once you get into the newer cars, you're going to want a lot more functionality of you know, the car itself to work, um, and that's where things will get a little bit trickier with the, uh, the Terminator X or, again, any standalone ECU at that point. Um, there's always ways to make it work, um, but it just depends on how much time and effort, money, and frustration you want to put into it. <coughs> okay, so with the Terminator X, you're able to do a lot more... Um, I don't know, race car stuff, whatever you want to call it, um, as far as uh, launch control and uh, bump control, you can do boost control, um, flex fuel, um, obviously some of the GM computers can do flex fuel as well, but some of the earlier ones can't. Um, and uh, you can do safety features, which is really one of my biggest complaints with the factory ECU stuff. Um, you know, you can... Uh, you set boost limits, uh, fuel, you know, you can, the car starts overheating, you can shut it off or, you know, whatever, build whatever kind of safety that you would like. Um, Holly's closed loop fueling works really, really well for what it is. Um, and their boost control actually works really well too. Um, technically with the Terminator X, you don't have the ability to do a map based uh, boost control, um, but there's ways around it. Um, and then most guys that are running dome pressure and CO2, um, you can run that, uh, you know, just like you would with um, Dominator, Fuel Tech, or you know how most of the other ECUs have switched to to doing boost control, um, and it works really well. Um, I'll go look on Holly's site real quick and see what kind of stuff they're showing for the differences um, of what matters. Um, the amount of connectors on the ECU, um, I don't think anyone really cares about that. Um, but the uh, Terminator X has two and the X Max has four, which I would consider this to be five because there is a power and a ground connector as well. Um, Terminator X cannot do low impedance injectors, um, so if you're running methanol or some injectors from uh, 1947, um, you won't be able to run those. Um, you could probably run an injector driver in line with it. Um, I've never looked into it. Um, oh, so the Terminator X ECUs actually have uh, eight. LED lights on the outside that are diagnostic lights, um, which to me is kind of scary. Like, I don't want my ECU to need diagnostic lights. Um, I understand why they did it, um, just to be able to check and see what kind of problems you're having uh, without having to troubleshoot or break out a laptop or whatever the case may be. Um, but to me, it's a red flag. Um, and again, you start looking around some of the Facebook groups and things of that nature, um, you'll see that that these are being referenced far more than you would like. Um, but again, we'll touch base on that a little bit more. Um, it does have the ability to do not control. Um, I have not had a chance to play with it very much yet. Um, it seems like the harness very rarely plugs into the actual sensors. They probably make adapter harnesses for that, but again, I uh, haven't gotten around to playing with that. Um, I can only imagine if you spend the time to actually properly set it up, um, and not just try and throw like a blanket uh, configuration on it, probably works pretty well. Um, and uh, another big disadvantage with the Terminator X versus the HP or the Dominator ECUs is this does not have onboard data logging, um, which means you're either going to need to have your laptop hooked up or 
push a button on the touchscreen display to start and stop data logs. Um, and when you're trying to blast a 1500 horsepower car down the track, uh, the last thing you want to worry about is um, pushing a button. Um, so with HP and the Dominator, you can set up, you know, I want to start logging at 1500 RPM above this throttle percentage, and you don't actually have to think or remember to do that. Um, and another thing, I guess, worth noting um, with the HP or the Holly stuff versus like the factory ECU, um, you have to set up every channel that you want to log with these beforehand. Um, as to where with the Holly, it's going to log every channel, um, which will take the makes the log a little bit slower. But uh, you know, you're going down the track and the car starts doing something really goofy. You got to look at your log with this, um, and you're wanting to look at um, I don't know torque management channels, and you realize you didn't log them ahead of time. They're it's gone forever. You can't see it. As to where uh, with the Holly, like you may not want to log. 30 different channels, or not log, but maybe not want to view 30 different channels. So you can essentially turn them off um, so they're not on your screen when you're viewing your logs. But when something happens, um, you can go through and you can actually bring all of that stuff onto the screen, which is, um, it's amazing. Um, it's, you know, saved me plenty of times where I wanted to see something that I probably wouldn't have set up to log, but when you need it, it's there and it uh, makes it very worthwhile. Um, Okay, so with the Terminator X, you're able to do a lot more, um, I don't know, race car stuff, whatever you want to call it, um, as far as uh, launch control and uh, bump control, you can do boost control, um, flex fuel, um, obviously some of the GM computers can do flex fuel as well, but some of the earlier ones can't. Um, and uh, you can do safety features, which is really one of my biggest complaints with the factory ECU stuff. Um, you know, you can uh, set boost limits, uh, fuel, you know, you can, the car starts overheating, you can shut it off or, you know, whatever, build whatever kind of safety that you would like. Um, Holly's closed loop fueling works really, really well for what it is. Um, and their boost control actually works really well too. Um, technically, with the Terminator X, you don't have the ability to do a map-based uh, boost control, um, but there's ways around it. Um, and then most guys that are running dome pressure and CO2, um, you can run that, uh, you know, just like you would with um, Dominator, or Fuel Tech, or you know how most of the other ECUs have switched to to doing boost control, um, and it works really well. Um, See. I'll go look on Holly's site real quick and see what kind of stuff they're showing for the differences um, of what matters. Um, the amount of connectors on the ECU, um, I don't think anyone really cares about that. Um, but the uh, Terminator X has two and the X Max has four, which I would consider this to be five because there is a power and a ground connector as well. Um, Terminator X cannot do low impedance injectors, um, so if you're running methanol or some injectors from uh, 1947, um, you won't be able to run those. Um, you could probably run an injector driver in line with it. Um, I've never looked into it. Um, oh, so the Terminator X ECUs actually have uh, eight. LED lights on the outside that are diagnostic lights, um, which to me is kind of scary. Like, I don't want my ECU to need diagnostic lights. Um, I understand why they did it, um, just to be able to check and see what kind of problems you're having uh, without having to troubleshoot or break out a laptop or whatever the case may be. Um, but to me, it's a red flag. Um, and again, you start looking around some of the Facebook groups and things of that nature, um, you'll see that that these are being referenced far more than you would like. Um, but again, we'll touch base on that a little bit more. Um, does have the ability to do not control. Um, I have not had a chance to play with it very much yet. Um, it seems like the harness very rarely plugs into the actual sensors. They probably make adapter harnesses for that, but again, I uh, haven't gotten around to playing with that. 
Um, I can only imagine if you spend the time to actually properly set it up um, and not just try and throw like a blanket uh, configuration on it, probably works pretty well. Um, and uh, another big disadvantage with the Terminator X versus the HP or the Dominator ECUs is this does not have onboard data logging, um, which means you're either going to need to have your laptop hooked up or push a button on the touchscreen display to start and stop data logs. Um, and when you're trying to blast a 1500 horsepower car down the track, uh, the last thing you want to worry about is um, pushing a button. Um, so with HP and the Dominator, you can set up, you know, I want to start logging at 1500 RPM above this throttle percentage, and you don't actually have to think or remember to do that. Um, and another thing, I guess, worth noting um, with the HP or the Holly stuff versus like the factory ECU, um, you have to set up every channel that you want to log with these beforehand. Um, as to where with the Holly, it's going to log every channel, um, which will take the, makes the log a little bit slower. But uh, you know, you're going down the track and the car starts doing something really goofy. You got to look at your log with this, um, and you're wanting to look at um, I don't know torque management channels, and you realize you didn't log them ahead of time. They're, it's gone forever. You can't see it. As to where uh, with the Holly, like you may not want to log 30 different channels or not log, but maybe not want to view 30 different channels. So you can essentially turn them off um, so they're not on your screen when you're viewing your logs. But when something happens, um, you can go through and you can actually bring all of that stuff onto the screen, which is, um, it's amazing. Um, it's, you know, saved me plenty of times where I wanted to see something that I probably wouldn't have set up to log, but when you need it, it's there and it uh, makes it very worthwhile. Um, Um, some people don't like that the uh, Terminator X um, only has one oxygen sensor available, um, but the HP is also only does one. Um, so in single turbo cars, it's convenient because you just have one downpipe. Um, but if you're trying to monitor anything bank to bank, you can't do it, um, and you would need a dominator. Um, again, there's other ways around that. You can run an external wide band um, and then use the 5 volt output. Um, from that to have this ECU log it and then you can compare the internal wideband on this versus your external and do both banks that way. Um, it's obviously going to add a little bit of extra cost to it, but uh, that's one way to do it. Um, the Terminator X um, looks like we only have the option to do the Bosch 4.9. Um, you can't do the Bosch 4.2 um, O2 sensors. Um, but the big disadvantage is you can't run the NTK. Um, you can run the NTK on the HP and the Dominator, and the NTK sensors are, are worth their weight in gold in comparison to the Bosch stuff, um, especially if you're running leaded fuel. Um, so that's uh, a little bit of a bummer. The downside to the, uh, the Terminator X, well, and the HP for that matter, and why I mean, personally I would just go for a Dominator um, right from the get-go, is um, these only have four inputs and four outputs, and they go very quickly. Um, you know, if you want to run just a simple radiator fan, there goes one output. If you want to run two fans, there's two outputs. If you want to run a trans cooler fan, there's three outputs, and you're basically out already. Um, and then inputs, you know, uh, there's so many things that I would want to monitor that uh, there's no way it would work. And to put it in a comparison, it's showing that the Dominator has uh, 50 um, uh, 50 inputs um, and 36 outputs. So the difference between 4 and 4 and 50 and 36 is worth um, really any amount of money. But when you compare the price of the Dominator to other ECUs and then the number of inputs and outputs, um, the Dominator is probably the most cost effective option that I've seen. Um, now this does have a internal map sensor, um, but considering your engine, even naturally aspirated, already has a map sensor, it's kind of um, pointless. Um, but you can use it as a barometric pressure sensor, which is nice. Um, so if you uh, live at the bottom of a mountain and end up driving to the top of a mountain, then uh, you know, the ECU will be able to make some changes based off of that. Um, this does give you the ability to do alpha end tuning for drive-by wire cars. I'm sorry, by uh, individual throttle body cars. 
Um, you don't see that too often uh, on the domestic side of things, but we run across it a lot on the imports. Um, again, we have, um, you don't have the ability to do map based boost control, um, but if you tap into the map sensor wire, you can backdoor it. Um, I want to say Matt over at um, Sloppy Mechanics has done some videos on that. Um, if I can find it, I'll link it in the description. Um, you can do dome control, um, but you're going to have a dome pressure sensor, uh, and an increased solenoid, and a decreased solenoid. So there goes half of your inputs and outputs already. Um, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Um, and it does not have their quote unquote boost builder um, function, which essentially is a way to build boost on two step. Um, but again, you can backdoor that with some custom tables and it'll probably work better, anyways. Um, it does have uh, nitrous control, but the amount of stages are very small. Um, yeah, you can only do one stage with this, as to where the others you can do eight. Um, pretty significant difference there. Um, and then it says here you cannot, you do not have, on the Terminator X series, you do not have advanced input strategies. Um, I don't do a lot of nitrous stuff, so I've never had the need to use that regardless. Um, as far as advanced cables go, um, HP and Dominator, you have eight available of the 1D, 1D per gear, 2D, and 2D per gear. Um, and then Terminator X, you got four 1D, um, one 1D per gear. Um, for 2D and then one 2D per gear. Um, the per gear stuff is usually nice for uh, if you're going to do some timing retard um, or boost control by gear or something like that. Um, it's nice to have. Um, the Terminator X does not have traditional traction control. Um, so again, if you want to do that, you're going to have to do it through the custom tables. Um, you're not going to have the same flexibility that you would with the HP or the Dominator. Um, and again, it does not have water meth injection um, specifically designed for it, so you'd have to be creative on how you did it. It does have staging assist, um, and then again, drive-by wire transmission control. Um, you would need the Terminator X Max, and um, Basically, any of the Holly digital dashes will work. So, if you wanted to get uh, one of the big ones versus the little small one that it comes with, uh, you can definitely do that. Um, it's a nice upgrade. All right, now that we covered all the boring stuff, I guess I'll just kind of go over my thoughts on it. Um, so, one, it's a basically $1,000. Um, comes with a harness and uh, you can plug it in and it works. Um, so with that being said, like regardless of how you really feel about it, I think it's still a, a pretty good option. Um, luckily, it works. There's very minimal differences between this and HP. Um, I bet now that this came out, they're gonna sell very few HPs because I feel like you either want this or you want the Dominator. Um, the HP is, is minimally different. Um, with that being said, um, this is their quote unquote composite case, as where the HP uh, is an aluminum case. And by composite, what they really mean is plastic. Um, this is a thousand dollar ECU, but when you pick it up and you touch it, um, it feels like a forty dollar ECU. Um, that's a little bit off putting, um, but again, in order to get it as cheap as it is, like there has to be compromises. That's that's the way the world works. Um, so that's a little bit misleading or disappointing, I guess you would call it. Um, I don't like the diagnostic lights. Um, it just it just makes you feel like you're going to have problems with it. Um, so uh, the other thing is, well, most people just throw this thing on the floor and they never even mount it anyways. But generally speaking, if you do mount this inside of the car, it's going to be in a point where you can't see these lights anyways. Um, or what I've also seen is somehow, some way, say the, the EC is mounted facing up and there's some, some holes in the dash where light can travel through and they're driving the car at night and now next thing you know all these lights are flashing up on the windshield. Um, so that's a bit annoying but I'm sure you could just uh, kind of get it. But just you can put a piece of tape over it if you want to block them off. Um, 
I said, the actual light of the lights doesn't bother me as much as the concept of we need diagnostic lights on there. Um, so that's kind of scary. Um, I touched on the harness. Um, I want to say that the harness is the same between this ECU and the others. Um, it's not very pretty. Um, I have, have seen problems with it, with pins being pulled out of the connectors and not being properly crimped. Um, it's a price thing. I mean, an engine harness for other ECUs, just the harness itself can be three grand, and that's not uncommon at all. Um, and granted, they're using nicer materials, and um, there's reasons that it's more expensive. Um, but uh, there's that. Um, the uh, the closed loop fueling works very very well, um, and I've seen a lot of people having problems with the oxygen sensors on the Terminator X. So I don't know if the actual wideband drivers in this are different than the other models, or if it's just installation problems. Um, if you don't put the sensor in the right spot in the exhaust, you're gonna burn through sensors more frequently. Um, that's just how that works. And if you're way off on the tune-up, you're also going to smoke sensors up pretty bad. Um, so the diesel truck's now shut off, and now they're hammering over there. So I apologize about all the background noise. Um, so, but basically for the average person, um, and assuming you're not trying to monitor 50 different channels, um, well, I guess five channels, um, I think this is a very good option for a lot of people. Um, I would absolutely take this over this any day of the week with the exception of being if it was a newer car and I wanted all of the, the everything to work inside of the car. Um, or if it's very minimally modified, um, this is going to work very well um, without adding the complications that come with this. Um, so they're, they're both good options, but again, if it was a swapped car or a race car or something like that, um, I would go with, um, with this, no questions asked. Um, the marketing on this with the self-tuning, I think, is borderline criminal. Um, you can technically build a base map on the little handheld screen, and you can get the car started and running without even having to hook a laptop up. Um, it's super generic. Um, I would never even consider running a car like using any of those kind of startup calibrations. Um, there is a learn function, which again, it's kind of like a marketing thing. Um, it's basically just long-term fuel correction. Um, the difference is uh, when you're using the laptop, you can just push one button and it will transfer all of those learn values over to the main fuel table um, and get you a little bit closer in the ballpark as to where traditional long fuel trims you would need to you know, go cell by cell or whatever it is and, and make your adjustment. So it does speed the process up. Um, I, if you're way out in left field and you're using the, the learn values, um, it seems to run around in circles. Um, so I'll generally turn it off and then uh, <clears throat> go about tuning the car. Um, and then once I'm done, I'll maybe re-enable it and um, basically see where I'm at. It'll let you know uh, kind of if you did a good job or not. Um, the last one I did after spending some time on the dyno, we went around and drove it and um, the fuel corrections were one or two percent. So um, that was nice. Um, now as far as um, how I was saying the downside to the Terminator X is the price. Um, a little bit of a slippery slope as far as how to kind of word this, but Long story short, this ECU is going to make it into the hands of a lot of people that maybe it shouldn't. Um, maybe that's that they don't have any EFI experience um, or the cars that they're gonna end, in, end up in are uh, a little rough around the edges. Um, and uh, I totally get everyone's working on different budgets um, and everyone has different knowledge base. Um, and that's all fine, but the problem that I see based off of that is every single car that I've had brought in for tuning that we didn't install the Terminator X, they've all had numerous problems. Um, actually, the car that this came out of is sitting on the lift over here, and uh, let me see how many things we have to fix before I can even feel comfortable starting the car. So I just wrote a list as I was uh, looking it over. Hopefully, uh, I'm going to have to 
make this phone call uh, here in a little bit and see how they want to proceed. But we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 separate problems that all need to be fixed and addressed before we can, uh, like I say, start and tune this one. Um, it's, it's not like it's a, a piece of junk car that you would expect that from. It's actually a really nice car that uh, I would happily own um, minus, minus this stuff. So um, again, it's just, it's going to end up in some situations like that, um, which would be fine, except uh, what you'll see is there's going to be a lot of people talking um, about what a piece of crap it is. And they're basically going to blame Holly for their problems. Um, as to where if this was a Dominator ECU and it was, I don't know what a Dominator setup kit is going to cost you uh, once you equip uh, it, but let's just say five grand. Um, most of the people spending five grand on their computer and associated items, um, they're going to install it a little bit nicer. They're going to spend more time on it. They're not going to ground uh, grounds to seat brackets and, you know, they're not going to uh, use electrical uh, connectors that are made for elevators they're going to use uh, actual items that are used for cars um, they're going to wire things using relays and not just wire things directly to the ECU and then burn the ECU up um, and uh, they're probably going to consult with somebody before they start it rather than just pushing a couple of buttons uh, firing it up washing the rings out of the thing because it's you know set up for the wrong injector size um, so I think uh, I, I've seen comments already of like, I paid a thousand dollars for this thing. Holly needs to do X, Y, and Z. It's like, you paid a thousand dollars for this thing. Holly shouldn't do anything really. They shouldn't even offer tech support at that price level. Um, I almost think they would have been better off raising the price on it, honestly, but uh, it, it makes it an awesome option for a lot of people. Um, so with that being said, um, if you buy one of these, make sure you read the instructions and actually follow the instructions and wire it correctly. Um, there's not a lot of wires that you need to hook up in order for it to work, but the ones that you do hook up need to be hooked up correctly. Um, for what it's worth, I think I've installed four or five of these now and all of them have started the first time I turned the key. Um, so when you go on these Facebook groups and you see all these, you know, it's, it's kind of brutal. It's the same things over and over again. Um, my car won't start, my car won't start, my car won't start. Um, and then I've seen a couple of things where they said it, and the cause ended up being the ECU itself, but strong possibility that the ECU was fried from wiring issues. Um, I wasn't there, I don't know the specifics of it, but uh, I've been doing this stuff long enough to know that uh, that's how that goes a majority of the time. Um, so I guess I will uh, end this in saying that if you do go this route, understand that you're buying an ECU and a harness and, and basically three or four thousand dollars worth of stuff and you're getting it for a thousand dollars. Um, so with that being said, like if there's a couple of bumps in the road to get it in and working, like you should kind of expect it for the price. Um, there has to be compromises to, to make something this inexpensive. Um, so if you work through them and, and you get it all sorted out and you get a functioning standalone with closed loop fuel control, uh, for a thousand dollars in your car, um, that's, you know, unheard of until this. Um, so it's kind of like if you, uh, you know, in a house or in a neighborhood where all the houses are a million dollars and uh you know you find a deal on yours and you pick it up for 400 grand like you know you're gonna have to put some additional work into it it's not necessarily like move-in ready but uh at the same time um, again all of the ones we've installed have all worked perfectly and uh, with the exception of being a little bit limited on inputs outputs and then some of the features um, uh, like fuel injector phasing I saw was grayed out. Um, I was trying to, to do some adjustments there um, And you're gonna see that you know, there are some things that are that are grayed out and you can't do but Ultimately if you want something cost-effective simple and works really well um, This is the ECU for you and uh, just don't expect it to be a dominator ECU for a thousand bucks so uh, I'm sure we'll be doing more videos on the Terminator X ECUs as I have countless ones that are uh, in the process of being installed that will be tuning soon. Um, so if you want to see any more, uh, just subscribe and uh, I will uh, link down below a couple of videos that we've done using the Terminator X stuff already. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.